I don't think we have an inflation problem. I, I think it's a semantics problem. Uh, you know, inflation is caused by excess demand and limited supply of, of goods and services. That's not what we had. We had plain old, good old fashioned currency devaluation. The Fed doubled the money supply in 2020 and 2021. So an 18 month period. Look, we've been a republic for 247 years. A long time. 247 years. Half of all the dollars in the history of the republic were created in 18 months. And that causes stress and so in the last 12 months uh jerome right it's funny you know when when jerome came into power when he became the the head of the 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 fed he was jerome right buttoned up suit and tie the hawk right and he was going to raise rates and the trumpster just bashed him i mean just said no no you are jay the dove and then 2020 happened and he became the letter J, the pusher. Like he was handing out stimmy checks at the corner of Broad and Wall like like they were going out of style. I mean, he was wearing the hoodie, forget the suit and tie. He was the pusher. And then last year, somehow he shed all that and went back to being buttoned up Jerome. And he has been cranking up the heat on on uh Interest rate hikes, and everybody's like, oh, look, inflation's coming down. Because Bullshit. Inflation, the CPI number, is coming down because oil prices went down, because Biden drained the SPR, and because used car prices went down, because we actually can get chips again. It has nothing, zero, to do with the Fed. The Fed didn't create the inflation. They didn't create the, you know, disinflation has nothing to do with Jerome. So this this whole nonsense about, oh, if, if, if we can get a good CPI print, then the market's going to move. Bullshit. It, 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 look, the Fed going from 75 to 50 basis points is not a pivot, right? It was, oh, he pivoted. No, he's still raising rates. He's still limiting liquidity. He's still tightening monetary conditions. And the market's calling bullshit, right? The market is pricing in cuts this year. I think they're going to be sorely disappointed because he's he is back to doing what he thinks is his job, which is short-term interest rates for 200 years have roughly equaled nominal GDP growth. Commentators believe that Bitcoin bulls do not need to wait long for the United States to start printing money again. The latest analysis of U.S. macroeconomic data has led one market strategist to predict quantitative tightening ending to avoid a catastrophic debt crisis. The U.S. Federal Reserve continues to improve liquidity from the financial system to fight inflation, reversing years of COVID-19 era money printing. While interest rate hikes look set to continue declining in scope, some now believe that the Fed will soon have only one option, to halt the process altogether. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Mark Yesko updates about Bitcoin's current market standing, the final bottom in crypto, and his outlook for Bitcoin in 2023. June 15th was the end of winter, beginning of spring. What I missed was Hurricane Sam. So I live in North Carolina, and every once in a while, about every 10 years, kind of late March, we get a nor'easter that spins off the coast and it dumps a bunch of snow. It's still spring. It's just snowing. And so, look, we had a nor'easter. We had this, this Hurricane Sam. Bad people do bad things, and... You know, I don't want to go all the way deep into the rabbit hole, but but I got I got one thing to say on that. So Sam Bankman Freed and Caroline were the masterminds of nothing. Okay. They are not the masterminds. This is way bigger and way more evil uh, than we need to talk about today. But um and and Howard Marks said it best. He said, you know, the problem in this world is is you have to decide between the good people who sound good and the bad people who sound good. Because they're only people who sound bad make presentations. And so, you know, I just got lucky, right? I mean, I I never met the guy. Um, you know, we we probably would have been lured in by his 
his charm. And I, I feel for, for Mooch and everyone who was, was victimized by this guy. The guy's a bad guy. Um, but I think there are way worse people above him. But my point is, yes, we had the, the dip from 18 down to 15 and then back to 18. We made the perfect cup and handle pattern. Um, but spring, interestingly enough, if you think about the four-year cycle, spring is basically flat. I mean, that is a perfect cup and handle. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Although somebody labeled it a double D, which is not politically correct, but uh, it does have a funny, they, they made a funny drawing. Um, but the the key there is uh, spring, is spring, spring is flat. Is flat. But there's a lot of volatility. Summer, which I think starts in April, May, usually nine months ahead of the, the halving, uh, that's when things are going to get fun. And the reality is, Bitcoin was engineered so perfectly. It's really amazing when you think about it. That's why I'm pretty sure Satoshi's not a single person because I don't think any one person could be this smart. I mean, just think about the halving. The halving guarantees number go up because what happens on the halving is you have all the miners that are securing the network and they have a fixed cost of electricity and space and machines. And suddenly the rewards go down in half whole bunch would go bankrupt unless the price goes up. The price going up tends to attract attention. Now, I always joke, it's mostly guys, right? Because we're hunter-gatherers and we see motion. I, I, it was a funny thing. So my wife says, get the ketchup out of the refrigerator. And I walk the refrigerator, open the refrigerator door, no ketchup. She walks up, grabs the bottle. If it ain't moving, I can't see it. So it's just real. Um, but once the price starts moving, then you go from the investors who buy assets when they're below fair value, to traders who don't give a shit about value, they just want movement, to speculators, and speculators are just the opposite side of hedgers. So you have miners who have to sell Bitcoin, so speculators come in and take the other side. But then you have the degenerate gamblers, and this is where it gets bad. When people enter a market with leverage, that's what causes the stress, and that's what causes the massive volatility. And so today, the network value of, of the Bitcoin blockchain is somewhere 20, high 20s, 28, 29. So as an investor, I'm buying because the price, current price, price is a liar, by the way. Price is not value. The price is below fair value. So I'm, I'm a buyer. And then as we get into crypto summer in April, May, uh, then the traders will push that price above fair value, and I'll still buy dollar cost averaging, as Patrick was saying, most important thing. Don't buy it all at once. You should just, you know, it's funny. I remember being on, uh, and I'll stop talking. I was on CNBC in 2019. And literally, while I was on the show, the price went from 10000 to 8000 And Melissa Lee, and this was in six minutes. It wasn't like in, in six hours. It was in six minutes. And Melissa Lee says, so what should we do? I said, buy it. She said, What? Are you kidding? Well, no, no, you'd always. I remember this interview so well. I remember this. I remember this day so well. I remember this day so well. I must yeah. say. And and my point was, buy it today, buy it tomorrow, buy it next week, buy it next month. And here's the thing, I'm I'm not. Sure. I I love Mooch said before. You know, it's the things that we know for certain that just ain't so. That's what kills us. Like when you're sure about something, like doubt is the greatest superpower in the world. If you can stay in a place of doubt and don't think that you know everything, you do much better. But when we're certain of something, and my wife would say that I'm certain of way too much, but I am certain, and, and I mean this, strong, I am certain of one thing, that blockchain technology is the evolution of computing power that has been going on since the 50s, 54 the mainframe, 68 the microchip, 82 the personal computer, 96 the internet, 2010 the mobile net, 2024, which is next year, y'all, the truth net. And we are going to replace trust with truth. And blockchains are going to run everything. I am certain of that. And the Bitcoin blockchain is the most powerful supercomputer in the world, is the most powerful computing network in the world by an order of magnitude of 1,500x. It's 1,500 times more powerful than CERN supercomputer. Owning a piece of that network is the most important thing you can do in this world.
Henrich, founder of Northman Trader, uploaded a chart showing interest payments on current U.S. government expenditure, now hurtling toward $1 trillion a year. A dizzying number, the interest comes from U.S. government debt being over $31 trillion, with the Fed printing trillions of dollars since March 2020. Since then, interest payments have increased by 42%, Henrich noted. U.S. paid $853 billion in interest for $31 trillion debt in 2022, more than defense budget in 2023. If the Fed keeps rates at these levels or higher, we will be at $1.2 trillion to $1.5 trillion in interest paid on the debt, it wrote. Such a scenario might be music to the ears of those with significant Bitcoin exposure. Periods of easy liquidity have corresponded with increased appetite for risk assets across the mainstream investment world. The Fed's unwinding of that policy accompanied Bitcoin's 2022 bear market, and a pivot in interest rate hikes is thus seen by many as the first sign of the good times returning. Not everyone, however, agrees that the impact on risk assets, including crypto, will be all-out positive prior to that. You know, the J.P. Morgan of our age, they called him the John D. Rockefeller of our age, the Cornelius Vanderbilt of our age. I mean, hell, they call them the freaking, they call him Jesus Christ. They call him the Jesus Christ of crypto. That's blasphemy. And and down here in, Morgan, in, in North Carolina, they called him the Michael Jordan, right? Even more blasphemous in North Carolina. Like, uh. But, I mean... This guy perpetrated a fraud. Same thing with Elizabeth. And, you know, people are like, oh, Tim Draper is an idiot. Tim Draper, literally one of the five smartest people I've ever met in my life. I'm I'm privileged to be able to call him, I can't call him a friend, friend, but you know, my business partner. One of the smartest people on this planet. And yeah, he got he got hoodwinked by by Elizabeth. But Elizabeth was a liar. Should have no, I don't think. You, you said that this that you said that this SBF thing was much bigger than we we think. You you alluded to the fact that he was just the front man, and this is actually it. who's a useful idiot. Look up the term "useful idiot" tonight, and and you'll understand. He's a useful but idiot. Be more, be more be more descriptive. So you, okay. you there were bigger I, people. I I believe, I believe, and it's just my it's just my belief. I don't you know, and and some of it's rooted in fact. Um, I believe that uh, a much larger uh, group that does not want crypto to survive and thrive um, create. Look, there, there are too many weird things, right? This company didn't exist six years ago, did not exist. And it, it became the second largest uh, on paper, because it actually wasn't real, second largest crypto exchange in the world. Tell me where the original money came from to, to start the company. The company was started a week after um, Biden gets into office. The largest contributor to Biden's campaign was Sam Bankman-Fried. Sam Bankman-Fried's mother is a large tornado cash operator. Not, not That's not actually tornado cash, but basically what she does is the equivalent of tornado cash. She scrubs political campaign contributions so the venture capitalists can get around campaign finance laws. That's what she does. The dad you know, went to Yale with all the, you know, uh, glitterati in, in D.C. as an advisor to uh, three-letter agencies, um, you know, taught Peter Thiel, gave him the, the the deal on, right? So there's, and here's the thing, in the old days, if I wanted to bribe somebody, in the old days, um, yeah, exactly, I mean, you take it down, the black ass are going to show up. Um, so look, I, I would meet Mooch at the park, and I'd have my backpack and I'd, I'd put it on the, the bench and, and I'd walk away. And he's like, Mark, Mark, you left your backpack. Then I'm just keep walking. And he looks in the backpack and it's full of cash. Just like, oh, okay. No way to trace that. No way to trace that. But here's the thing. If the government sends money on chain to the Ukrainian government, who then sends it to FTX, who then sends it to Alameda, who then puts it in a shell company, here's a stat that is hard to believe. There are 400-ish companies in the Alameda portfolio, 400. 200 of them, just let that number sink in, 200 of them were shell companies owned solely by SBF. So what are your thoughts about Mark Yesko's prediction? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.